Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we have a wonderful guest with us. We have Nishi Pandit here, and today he is going to enlighten all of us about medical astrology. He is going to show, with the help of example charts, that when planets are placed in certain positions, what kind of diseases and what kind of ailments that they can create, and maybe some solutions also. And he is also a Ayurvedic practitioner, as you said. and he also has a channel and he also does reading so if anybody is suffering from any health problem and you want an astrological advice and expert advice then he is the man to go all right so welcome to exotic astrology and please enlighten us thanks for having me baba ji <laughs> okay so yeah medical astrology is a it's a vast topic you know and what we can try to do in this video is provide just a basic overview of some of the working principles and i can show how i look at a chart you know when i'm trying to ascertain somebody's medical condition so by no means it's complete but it'll give a taste we can say that much okay so maybe i go ahead and i'll share my screen Let's see share we are all very interested to know medical astrology <laughs> i'm sure oh this is a south indian style by any means can you change it to north indian <laughs> 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 i've stayed in south india for 5 indian? years but <laughs> i'm not very well versed with this that's funny it's easy It's easier to see, I think, with the South Indian, the medical things, like at least the way okay. that I look at it, or at least I'm used to looking at it. Oh, okay. No, then it's okay. Then you can uh, do it this way. There's, we will understand the principles. That's fine. Okay. So, you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Great. So this is an example chart of somebody who has epilepsy. Okay. Right. Now, I don't actually know this person, but this is just a example chart that's in the database for somebody. And uh, bef before you go into this, it's uh, I think if somebody doesn't understand these terms, you can just say in one or two lines what the diseases actually mean. Okay, so epilepsy is a disorder of the nervous system in which people experience seizures, and there's various degrees and extremities to those seizures. You know, there's epilepsy that's genetic. There's epilepsy that's developed. some infants have epilepsy which is known as Dravet syndrome so it's a very complex disorder but it's primarily a disorder of the nervous system okay and so the thing about medical astrology is that in essence it's very simple in practice it's very complex and largely because people are very complex and one of the things we have to understand is how do the planets relate to the human body so in terms of like organs in terms of organ systems in ayurveda what we call dhatus which is the tissues the seven tissues all of those things have an astrological or planetary component okay so the planets are ruling our bodies in some very literal ways and so if we understand what those connections are then we can easily look at the chart and see what's happening in somebody's body and we also have to understand some of the basic principles of like shatbala dignity um you know avashtas are also important especially i use a uh, lajitari avashtas for this uh rashi aspects all you know we have to look at everything we have to look at the qualities of the planet the qualities of the rashi the planet is in um we especially will want to focus on self factors like like um lagna sun moon atmakaraka lord of the atmakaraka and there's also different divisional charts that can be looked at but we won't go into all of that right now I'm just giving a kind of a synopsis. So let's see. The first thing, you know, in looking at this chart that I would say stands out is that there's a Mars Saturn conjunction in Cancer. Okay? So both Mars and Saturn have a role to play in the nervous system. I mean, Mars rules, you could say the intelligence of the nervous system. You know, Mars is there to make sure that what flows through the nerve channels is flowing in the ways that it should be flowing, meaning in the right directions, in the right quantities, at the right times. 
you know, the intricate system of the human body needs to work, you know, the way that it's meant to work. And any deviation from that is going to start to cause imbalances. So Mars has an important role in the governing of the nervous system. Saturn also has a lot to do with the nervous system because Saturn is associated with air element and the nervous system also is associated with air element or the conduction of impulses, right? There's a lot of motion in the nerves. The nervous system is primarily a channel of flow, okay? So Mars and Saturn both relate to the nervous system. They both are also, you know, enemies of each other, okay? So Mars-Saturn conjunction is not, not really a great thing to have for health. Of course, that's going to depend on so many things. So like, don't go thinking that everybody with Mars-Saturn conjunction has bad health. That's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of people with Mars-Saturn conjunctions who don't have epilepsy, who don't have many problems even. There's a lot more you have to look at to confirm these things. But I'm just pointing out that this is the factor, you know? Whether or not that's actually a clinical factor in somebody's case has to be determined properly, okay? So don't jump to conclusions. But here, Mars is debilitated and in cancer. Okay, so we know Mars is not really very strong. So the intelligence of the nervous system is not going to be as well manifested as it would be in somebody who had a very well-placed Mars, okay? On top of it, Mars is joined by Saturn, his enemy. Okay, so one of the things that, you know, we say about Mars-Saturn conjunction when we consider um, Lajitari Avashtas as, as well is that they impede each other's roles. And... One of the things that happens is that people are more sensitive with this type of placement to their nervous system being imbalanced by things that other people might be able to resist. So one of the things is people can get a lot of allergic responses. They can get a lot of food sensitivities. If they use things like alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, intoxicants, any kind of poison, chemical poison, environmental poison, their physiology is not going to be as equipped to respond to that as it would for somebody else who can kind of withstand a lot more abuse. So these people, because Mars, especially in this case, Mars is debilitated, they need to do everything they can to maintain the intelligence of their nervous system. So anything that kind of jolts it, anything that deviates from that is going to be a big blow. And that blow kind of builds over time. So here you have someone with epilepsy, and it's pretty obvious why. It has everything to do with the Mars-Saturn conjunction and cancer. Now, <clears throat> you know, when you're looking at a chart like this, there's a lot of different things to look at, you know, and you just have to develop that understanding of the correspondences between planets and the human body, the human anatomy, and understand that they're like totally reflected. And that's what's going to allow you to see. And then you have to really know the astrological principles of what is a healthy planet, what is a healthy placement of a planet, you know? So this is one example. Um, I can give another example. Here's lymphoma cancer. So here, this is an interesting one. This person has, you know, lymph cancer. So the lymph is, you know, associated with rasadhatu, you know, one of the first tissues of the body. Um, it's like the plasma of the body. And the lymph also has a significant function in detoxifying the body, okay? So the lymph is, has a lot of watery components to it. It's a gland. Um, our lymph needs to be draining in proper ways so that what is toxic is released. Otherwise, you know, any water that we retain in our body that has toxins in it will also retain toxins. So the health of the lymph is very important. And cancer is a disease at the cellular level. So in cancer, what's happening is that the cells of the body are attacking themselves, okay, which is not a logical response. It, it doesn't actually make sense. But that's what we call an autoimmune disorder, is when the immune system starts to destroy itself, basically. So in that case, you know, its intelligence has been undermined, similar to what I was saying about Mars, governing the intelligence of the body. So with lymphoma cancer here, there's first thing that stands out to me is that 
Lagna Lord is debilitated. Okay, because the Lagna is Taurus. And Lagna typically signifies the body and also the path of the body. Okay, so in that sense, the life of the body. Um, but we can't take that to mean everything, you know, but that's a factor. Lagna is an important factor. Lagna Lord is an important factor. The so Lagna Lord is debilitated in Virgo, right? So that's, that shows that, okay, they might have some struggles with their body, okay? So we know that much, but what is Venus? Well, Venus is the planet of rejuvenation. Venus governs the immune system, okay? Because the immune system is there to keep you healthy and regenerated in the midst of the challenges of life. So disease happens when something comes upon us that we can no longer resist, and then we become vulnerable, right? Our defense is not strong enough for the impact of that imbalance. Okay? That's one definition of disease. So Venus is important in the sense that it's maintaining our immunity. It's in maintaining our resistance to pathological factors in life. And that's why Venus rejuvenates us. So the ability of a person to recover from illness is seen through Venus. Some people will get sick and they'll just bounce right back. Okay. Other people, they get sick and it's like they never totally recover and they'll say things to you like, you know, ever since I got sick that one time, I've never been the same. You know, after I got that flu that one time, I've ever, nothing's been the same. You know, and it's like, well, what is that? Well, they never quite regenerate themselves fully. A part of them is sort of lost in the disease and that has everything to do with the function of Venus. So here you see that the person is immune compromised because Venus is debilitated and it's a very important planet for them being Lugna Lord. So it makes sense. You know, the cancer makes sense. Just at this simple level, you can see how the cancer makes sense because their immune function is, is debilitated. You could say it's dormant and the immune system needs to be alive, active, functioning, protecting you from disease. So here cancer is a very advanced pathology. You know, cancer happens, at the end of a long spectrum of imbalances, at which point the body has finally reached a point that it's like self-destructing. It can no longer even keep itself together. So at the cellular level, it's falling apart. You know, it's destroying itself. So that's an immune disorder fundamentally. And Venus also is a water element planet, right? And lymphoma, like I made the connection earlier, has a lot to do with water. And Rasadhatu also has a lot to do with water. So we can see that the immune disorder they're going to have has a lot to do with something in the, in the water of their body. Okay. So that means secretions, which means glands. It means um, any liquid material in their body becoming diseased. Um, so that's Venus. Um, now they also have a Mars Rahu conjunction, you know, and Rahu is a significant disease factor. Rahu causes imbalances of all kinds and so does Ketu, but Rahu in particular, especially planets with or near Rahu, they get poisoned, you could say. So Rahu Mars conjunction isn't helping. So that's part of the reason why you can see that this person's body didn't quite develop you know, the intelligence that it needed to, you know, because whatever graha is with Rahu, that, that graha is something that's being developed in, the, in that lifetime. It's not something that's already strong. It's something that's becoming strong. So Mars is not something that's strong for this person. You know, they're learning to develop that. So they don't, they're not born. Their body isn't born with this strong, innate physiological intelligence at the level that it would be for somebody else. So you could say that they're compromised in that respect. And then Venus is debilitated. So it's very easy in that sense for somebody to get sick. So, I mean, that's, I'm just looking at this very simply, you know, just giving an example that, you know, it doesn't have to be very complex. You don't have to dig through all the Vargas and all that. You can see very clearly sometimes just by looking at the state of somebody's chart in this, in this very easy way and understanding the human body disease process and how it relates to planets, you can see what's going on. Now, you know, I like to think of reading the chart as like taking the pulse of a person, 
You know, like in Ayurveda, one of the major diagnostic tools we have is taking the pulse or what we call Nadi Vignan, you know, the knowledge of the channels. So when we're looking at astrology, we don't have somebody's wrist in front of us. A lot of times I'm talking with people who are not even in the same room as me, right? And I'm having to help them determine what is their illness and how can they recover and what is their course of treatment, right? That's why I like astrology, because to me, astrology is like taking the pulse of the person, by taking the pulse of the planets, you know, it's a more complete pulse. And for that reason, it's equally an art and a science, you know, like when I was studying Ayurveda, the teachers would always say, you know, don't, don't rely on pulse diagnosis, because, you know, you really have to become a master in pulse before you can start to rely on that, like always confirm your pulse reading with something else before you make the diagnosis in that sense. So pulse diagnosis is obviously a profound science, but it's also an art, you know? So it's not like you can just learn and memorize techniques and textbook knowledge and apply it, and now you have the recipe, you know, for determining what's wrong with people. You really have to learn how to listen to the nadis, how to hear the nadis, how to feel what's happening in the nadis. You know, that's the art of pulse. And similar with astrology, you know, you're looking at, the chart and you're looking at the pulse of the person and you need to learn how to be receptive to what that is in an intuitive level equally as at a scientific level. So we need to know our techniques. We need to understand everything at a textbook level, but then the application of it is very, very artful. So I want people to get the idea that just by looking at these simple conjunctions, you can start to deduce disease, but I'm just pointing those out to show that, how the correspondence exists. So, what do you think, Babaji? Yeah, it's like pretty important to see the whole chart, as you said. Because many people now they may type in the comments, "Oh, I also have Mars and Saturn together." You know, then exactly. Yeah, so I would request, and specifically, this is medical astrology, and uh, we cannot just go on suggesting. Oh, you throw this on the eastern direction in the Ganga and this problem will vanish. We can't do all those things here, okay? So, <laughs> if anybody is having any doubts, then uh, they should either consult a doctor or a professional. I mean, at least in medical astrology. That is what I would say that we cannot play around with our existing knowledge if you are not an expert in this. <laughs> That's right. You know, to really do medical astrology, you need to have um, studied medicine. Okay, that's a prerequisite. So you can't go into just because you know astrology now you can start to apply medical principles, you know. So you really have to know both medicine and astrology. And anciently they were in one tradition, you know, you learn both at the same time. So all astrologers knew medicine and all physicians knew astrology. And that made sense because they both expand on each other in a very beautiful way. So those who are interested in this, this level of astrological science and med medical science really should, should learn. And, you know, I am going to be offering a course on Ayurveda and astrology with Ryan Kurzak of Asheville Vedic Astrology. We're putting together a webinar sometime in January and people can, it's going to be more of an in-depth course for people who don't have any exposure or have some exposure and are interested in learning how Ayurveda and astrology correspond to one another and how they can be utilized together. And we put some YouTube videos together. We did about seven videos that are on Ryan's channel right now that are like introductory videos that cover a lot of the fundamental principles behind Ayurveda and astrology. So people who really want to learn more about this and see what's behind it can look at those videos you know, in which we talk about, you know, what is prana? What is, what are the five elements? Panch Mahabhutas, you know, what is, um, what are the three doshas? You know, how do we understand that? How do we understand how all of that gets reflected in the Rashis, which also have elements, doshas, qualities, gunas, you know, so planets also have all those qualities. So understanding their intersection is basically what medical astrology is. All right. So the next examples we can do in the next part, I guess. So stay tuned everybody and we'll see each other soon.